You want to buy, when you come to my restaurant, you want to drink wine. Most of you want to drink wine, and I want to sell you wine, but I don't really want to hard sell you. I want to give you the options. I want to tell you, hey, if you're looking for a Merlot, I have these four fantastic Merlots in, this, in, this, in the category you're looking for. Oh, and I happen to actually know this vineyard. We were there, and I, I've met the owner of this one, and this one has this body, this one has this flavor. And then you're going to make the decision to buy it. It's not me telling you, hey, this $63 bottle of Merlot is what you need tonight as opposed to this $43 bottle. Then you'd be like eked out, right? But if I told you this $63 bottle, we were at the vineyard, it's 600 acres, we met the owners, here's the pictures on our website, this and that, you're going to feel that connection and you're going to feel better about spending 63 bucks. You might not even want to spend the 43 bucks because you know there's more of a connection, an emotional connection on that $63 bottle. For me, and now I'm showing to you, to you and that has happened. Last year, a customer came in for lunch. They were going to buy a $37 bottle of Chianti. And we talked about one of our past Italy trips. Been to Italy three times. Talked about one of our past Italy trips. Got in a conversation with Jamie. They were so ecstatic to spend $109 on a bottle of wine for lunch. And loved every sip of it. Loved the story. They actually came back again for it. Yes. <laughs> But it wasn't a hard sell. We just gave them some information. We told a story. We're just going to talk about storytelling. Be a storyteller. Content's king. Be a storyteller. I have no problem charging a dollar more than the restaurant down the street for what appears to be the same item. So if I'm selling a portobello, grilled portobello appetizer, and they're selling a grilled portobello appetizer, I have no problem charging a dollar more. But I have to tell the story. If you know that my portobello is from down the road, and it's raised locally, the farmer, the name of the farm, this and that, there's more transparency, you're willing to pay a dollar more for something that you know about, there's a more of emotional connection than something else that you don't know about, right? Especially if you're very conscious on food. Because again, a lot of my market's are very conscious on their food. And we do a lot of educating. I've sent out so many emails and so many videos on YouTube about all the Chinese products that are infiltrated into our food supply. A ton of them with certain health consequences. That's all I have to do is post a video on 90% of the restaurants using Chinese garlic. And I'm going to get business. I don't have to say come to my restaurant because I'm this and that. No, 90% of restaurants use Chinese garlic. Here's where it's grown. Here's where American garlic's grown. Here's the residual chemicals left in the Chinese garlic. Here's what the American garlic's about. If I'm posting that, they know that I'm supporting it and that I'm selling that. So story, 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 stories. So our Italy trip. We've gone been to Italy three times. We post a ton of pictures on Facebook. We went just this last fall. We went back in 2009 and then before that we went, before we had the restaurant. But every time we post pictures of us in Italy, people walk into the restaurant. I want to drink what you drank in Italy. Happened two weeks ago. Five ladies walked in, sat down. They go, we're drinking what you drank in Italy. Simple as that. They saw the pictures. We were at 12 wineries. They want to know the story, the emotional connection. Sourcing from... Yeah, oh yeah, brought a ton of people to the last wine dinner. Sourcing from farms, farm to table. For me, that's huge. That's a big, big, big selling. Social responsibility. That's a huge term in food now. And I've been on that. I've owned socially, socially responsible food. I've owned that domain name for five years before this was really even a popular buzz because I saw this is where the industry is going. And now you have all these documentaries on slave labor sugar, slave labor chocolate, slave labor shrimp, slave labor seafood in Thailand. It's, they're all over the place now. New York Times writes about it. Time Magazine writes about it. And I knew that this was an issue because, again, I'm passionate about the industry and I do my research and I know these small little details of my industry because I've, I've researched it. And it's just a part of passion. I'm just, I'm, I can read all day about this stuff. And so I knew that this is a big issue, socially responsible cuisine. So this website I have gets great hits. I've repurposed other people's documentaries. It's great. I, have a, I have also have a, sam, a site called nofarmedsalmon.com where I've got some of the top documentaries on there. I've had people, uh, marine biologists reach out to me, some of the top in, one of the top in the world in British Columbia and said, Marcus, you're doing a fantastic job. Thank you for your cause. And I'm like, all I did was took your information, so-and-so's information, so-and-so, I put them on a website. 
I'm just trying to tell people, hey, farmed salmon's not what you think it is. I don't care if it's organic or not. It's not good for you. And here's people that are in the industry that are catching my work like this. It's really not my work. I'm just repurposed information. But I bought a domain name, nofarmsalmon.com. I put up a whole new website. And there's a small link to my green certified restaurant on the side there. But if you're getting to that site, if you're getting to nofarmsalmon.com and you're going to click my link, you're a perfect customer. You're a perfect guest. That's, pre that's a pre-qualified guest right there. If you're going to socially responsible food and you read through my stuff and you click the link, link to my green certified restaurant, you're a qualified guest. I mean, that's like, wow, you're the perfect guest for me. So what if you don't have products that have big stories? Some of you are going to say, well, gee, I sell cement or I'm selling rock powder and I can't wait for that damn scientific study to come out because I don't have a story on this rock powder. <laughs> Are you a third generation rock grinder? Is there a family history of you grinding rocks? There's gotta be some kind of angle that you can figure out that's gonna sell. So is it your family history? Did you migrate here from somewhere? Did you start this business when you were at home because it was a home-based business because you had kids? There's some kind of story that you can weave with whatever you're doing. Stories sell, stories create emotion. People buy based upon emotions. People don't wanna be sold but they love to buy. They want to know I'm helping out a stay-at-home mom who quit her six-figure job so she could spend time with her twins and give them a better quality of life, so I'm going to go buy her product because I feel good about supporting somebody that's doing that as opposed to going to Walmart or somewhere else and buying a similar product. There's a story somewhere. There's a story everywhere. Figure it out. Research and ask your guests, your customers, why are you buying from me? They'll tell you why they're buying from you. And then focus on that. <coughs> transparency. For me, transparency is huge, and that's what all these social platforms do. Websites, YouTube, it's all about social, uh, it's all about transparency. It's all about seeing Jamie and I in Italy. It's all about seeing where food comes from. It's all about seeing where the garlic comes from. It's all about seeing our kids, our family. A lot of times we show our kids. We want to show that we're a real business. We want to show that we're a real family. We want to show that we're just not, you know, thank you. We just want to show that we're just not there just to sell a product, that we're actually real, real, real people. So transparency is huge.